Hello there folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what we have here is a real challenge. I accepted this because I thought, man, I want to see what I can do with that. They got three issues here that are pretty obnoxious. Uh, number one is, look at where they've got the wire here. See this 2x4, that's true and plush. So their wire is actually past the stucco. Now I have a, sol well, they asked me, what can you do to fix that? So my suggestion, of course, normally the first one is remove all the, the lath and go with a thinner shear. So we were about seven eighths instead of past the stucco. <laughs> that guy gave me the best Clint Eastwood impression I've ever seen. So I thought, I take it that means you don't want to do that. That's number one. Number two is we can remove these furring nails because they sit out a quarter inch and use flat staples and when we do this we're going to hit these with caulking uh, all the way up there and get it as tight as possible. We'll have big gaps here where they lathed it. We're going to go with a water resistant stucco. That's what they say on the bags. I'm not an engineer, I'm an applicator because they have issues here also. They also have two other issues. They put the drip on the outside of this paper. Now when I informed them, hey gee whiz, this paper got to be over here. They said, look, it's on the prints this way. And I said, I've never passed inspection. They said, it already passed inspection. So what they did was, this one is what I recommend. They said the paper here, the felt, goes over this one and then the drip goes on top of that. They said it's passed inspection, it's on the prints. So what I said is, um, what I'll do while we're here, it's only going to take us 10 minutes, is I'll put a little caulking on this uh, drip screen just to be on the safe side. But I generally don't argue with folks if they told me it passed inspection, it's on the prints, and they're happy with it. Um, last thing we're going to deal with is this corner. Now, let's see, Jay, if you could get an idea of where we are. Our paper and wire is, again, it's really, really bad here. So, at that angle, something's going to give here, guys. When I put a corner on here, either this corner, this side's going to be tweaked or the other side is going to be tweaked. It's not going to be a chewing plum corner. If you put a string line up there and drop it, something's got to give if if both sides are off. So we're going to do the best we can with what we have to work with up here. This wire actually is even worse than this side. It's past this side by oh a good oh, a good half inch. It's past. The wire here is past the stucco up here by a half inch. So again what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these heads, pull the nails, caulk them, and then use a stapler to, to make it flat. And what I lastly gonna may do, it depends, here's a, here's a technique that the fellows in the trade like me realize. We can put a bonding agent from here to here, skim it, and then come out to this where it's gonna probably be a little prominent, and then put another skip trial over that. So we'll see where we're at when we get to that stage. But right now we're working against time, so we're gonna get busy. All right, guys, we are putting this scratch coat on. It's going to take us a good hour or so to put the whole scratch coat on everything, so we'll come back to it and show you. All right, guys, here's the, the fun part. I've got two coats on this right here. This, we're about an inch and a half. Here, we're about a quarter inch. And yes, sometimes I've placed plaster an eighth of an inch. Sometimes I've gone four inches, so we're feathering it. This right here, separates the time in from those who don't have it. Now, I'm expected to do this well because that's what I do for a living. So what I do is I'm gonna take this Darby, and what I'm trying to do here is rot it, true and plumb. Dang it, I got a handle that's bouncing all over the place. And what I do is this one, this joint here, the one I'm really concerned with because this one here dictates when you're down below 30 feet and looking up if there's going to be a hump. So the Darby or rod helps me square out this wall to and from. Fortunately this is a skip trial finish and it's very forgiving. Okay guys, 
we are where we want to be. The contractor said, gee guys, how'd you get that out of there? I'll tell you, it uh, was a bit of a challenge because we have an eighth of an inch here. We have a half inch there. But if we put this Darby here now, you can see it, it's, it's better. It's much better. Come on over here. We'll show you better on the ground when we drop down because pretty high up here. Now here is the same thing. We take my trowel, feather this joint in. The idea is we want to get it true and plumb here. That's pretty good. There's a little bit of inconsistencies, but I'm going to try to get that out with, with a texture. Anyway, that's, I started off with this, so I thought I'd show you folks it. Uh, when we're done, we'll show it to you from the bottom, looking upward. Okay, guys, fun part now. Why am I using a color coat material? Well, I couldn't match this with the brown coat. It's been raining on us a little bit. Adds a little excitement to the job. And yes, we work year round, even in the rain. Of course, if it, if it started to rain real hard, and it hit this wall and it came down in sheets it would take my color off but not this this is hard it would actually be good for it but i'm looking up at the sky and i can just see partial clouds so we know it's going to rain tomorrow that's why we're here now knocking it out a lot of people do say gee what happens can you, do you not work in the whole winter of course we do okay guys down to the final stage we got seven eighths of an inch of screed showing here. I can't do nothing with this. And we feather into about here to full. So I lose seven eighths. You know that yin and yang thing. We're, we got this somewhat straight. So, so something's going to give. And so I took it right here because this won't show. Now what we're doing is texturing. And uh, fortunately, years and years ago, one of the best fellas in the business showed me how to blend all this stuff in. Oh, Fred Smith. Uh, of Danny Smith plastering. He was the best. He'd say, yo, bro, take one up and then stagger it. Put your next joint here. So these, so you don't have a line like this. Say, hey, watch. It's coming up. You don't want that line. So he would say, stagger it. Come past. What that meant is when all is said and done, you won't see one straight line when it's all painted. So I'm going to clear up that mess I just made. Another thing while I'm on it, guys. Yes, we did a scratch and brown here. Will this hairline? Probably. Because if I did a scratch and brown, say, just like I'm doing now, and place in a color finish over it, with just, this is the texture I want. It's the same thing. If I did a scratch and brown, say, I scratch this and I come back and I let, it, I let this scratch set for 48 hours to come back and brown it. Is that gonna crack? Probably, because whether or not I'm doing it same day using a superior product or going traditional way with the scratch and brown. The idea is the cement has got to cure. The pH level has got to drop down. And when it does, we'll get some hairline cracks. But most folks are aware. I mean, sometimes we don't get any crack. Most times we do. But most folks like these guys are aware that we are probably going to get some hairline crack. Nothing that the elastomeric primer and paint won't flood. So anyway, um, we're almost out of here. Okay, guys, we are all set here. Turned out to be a heck of a lot less than a challenge than I thought it would be. Uh, wasn't too bad. This texture is very, very forgiving. We try to do a Santa Barbara smooth mission. Now that's tough to feather in. No room for our mistake, but this one is pretty forgiving. Cleaned up everything, got both sides. Anyhow, folks, uh, my name is Kirk. I am with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Thank you, folks, for watching, and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one.